Hello everyone, my name is Wendy. In this video we will go over how to create YouTube thumbnails with GIMP. I'll be using Windows and GIMP 2.10.22, which is the latest version of GIMP at the time this video was created. If you would like to follow along, I will leave a link to the image in the description below. I downloaded this image from freepick.com. You can use one of your own images if you prefer. So let's get started. Come up to the File menu and select New. Here in the dialog, we'll change the settings to 1280 by 720. These are the recommended dimensions for YouTube thumbnails. Open the Advanced options. Keep the default resolution at 300 pixels per inch. You can always change the resolution if the final image goes over 2 megabytes. Keep all the default settings. And in Fill With, select Transparency, then click OK. We're going to create a very simple composition with an image, background and some text. So let's bring in our image. Come up to the File menu. Click on Open as Layers. Navigate to the folder where your image is and select your image. Then click on Open. If you look over at the Layers panel, you will see a new layer has been created for the image. This image is very big. We can manually adjust the size by using the Move tool and the Scale tool. However, we can also use another method which might be easier. Come up to the Layers menu and select Scale Layer. Now in the dialog, you can see there are options to adjust the settings for the height and the width values. When the chain is closed, it will scale everything in proportion. So we only need to set one value. I'll set the width to a value of 1500 Hit enter on the keyboard, then scale. Let's come up to the main toolbox and make sure we have the move tool and position the image. The image is still bigger than the actual canvas size. I wanted it that way so I could move the image and find a good position. I will resize the image layer once I've added the text background. Now we're going to add some guidelines. Guides will help to position the image and elements precisely. Come up to the top menu, Image menu, Select Guides, New Guide by Percent, and in the dialog, in Direction, select Vertical, Position 50%, then click OK. The guide has been positioned exactly in the center of the canvas. Let's create one more guide. It'll be another vertical guide. However, this time type in a value of 75, then press OK. Before we move on, come up to the View menu and make sure Snap to Guides is checked. This will snap the image and elements to the guides. Now let's add some text. Come up to the Toolbox and select the Text tool. Let's have a look at the text settings and options first. To change a font, click on the A icon. You can scroll through the Fonts menu. I'll be using a Montserrat font, however, if you prefer, you can use an Arial. The font size, type in a value of 30, and in the unit setup, make sure it's set to pixels. Make sure anti-aliasing is checked, this will create smoother edges and curves on the text. Click in the color box, and from the color selector, select white as it's an easy color to read. In Justify, you can line the text to the left, to the right, center, and filled. Select Center. Next is Indent. After that is the line spacing value, which we'll come back to after, and then the letter spacing. Inbox will keep the default option for dynamic mode. Come over to the canvas and we'll leave a space at the top to add GIMP's logo. Click on the guideline. Four boxes will appear. This is where the text will be displayed and also a small semi-transparent menu has appeared above the text box. This is a great little tool as you can edit individual letters and words by selecting them without having to modify all the text. Let's start typing our text. With the caps on or in capital letters, type how to create. Hit the enter key to start a new line. Next, type YouTube, hit enter, thumbnails, hit enter, with Hit Enter and GIMP. There are several ways to select the text. With the mouse pointer inside the box boundary, double click beside the word, triple click beside a sentence, 
hold the mouse button down and move over all the text, or Control A, and that will also select all the text. With all the text selected, let's come up to the semi-transparent menu above. There are five buttons on the left. Let's have a look at the four A's first. The first A will convert the text to bold, the next italic, the next underline, and the last one is strike through. And the very first button will clear the style of the selected text. We just want the bold text, so click the first A. Now come over to the settings panel. Set the line space into 30, then hit enter. Let's go back over to the text box. Click anywhere inside the boundaries just to deselect the text and now select YouTube and Thumbnails. Come up to the menu above and in font size type in a value of 80 and hit enter. We'll also do the same for GIMP. Select GIMP, type in a value of 80 and hit enter. Come over to the layers panel. When we started typing, a new layer had automatically been created for the text and the title is How to Create. Now let's position the text again. Come over to the toolbox and select the Move tool. Click, hold and drag the text. To do this, place the mouse pointer on a letter or it will move the layer below. And in the centre of the text there is a small plus icon. This will snap to the guide. Now we can add Wilbur. That's the name of GIMP's logo. Now let's go over to the brushes dialog. Mine is situated on the right hand side. However, if you can't see your dialog, come up to the Windows menu, Dockable Dialogs, and select Brushes. Now from the menu, if you scroll right down to the bottom, you'll find the GIMP icon. Drag it out onto the canvas. As you can see, it's very big, so we're going to have to scale it. Come over to the toolbox and select the Scale tool. Then click on the icon to activate the tool. You can manually adjust the size by dragging on the small boxes on the corners or the sides. Let's go to the settings first and in guides, check keep aspect. Now everything will scale in proportion. Come over to the logo and let's drag on this corner. When you're happy with the size, come over to the scale settings on the right hand side. Here you can also manually type in the width and the height. You can reset and start again, readjust and scale. Let's just confirm the scale. Click on the scale button. Now before you do anything, grab the move tool to disactivate the scale option. Move the icon and snap it onto the guide. This will center it with the rest of the text. I'm going to create a background layer to go below the text. So come over here to the panel, select new layer. Just keep all the default settings, keep transparency and click OK. Now we're going to move this layer. Make sure it is below the text and above the image. Below the panel there are two arrows. Click on the downward arrow. We still have the first background layer that we created at the very beginning. Actually, we don't need this now, so click on the delete button to remove it. Then come back and select the other layer. Now we can come up to the toolbox and grab the free select tool to draw out the shape. You can draw out a straight line right down the center or a slanted line. Let's create the slanted line. With the mouse pointer outside of the canvas, click once to leave a point and move over to the opposite side. Leave a space between the line and the letter T. You can also hold the control key down to draw out vertical or horizontal lines. Click and move and start to draw out the shape. At each corner, click and leave a point and then come back to the very first point that we created. When we hover over the first point, it will turn yellow. Click on the top of it to close the selection. The selection is displayed with small black and white dots moving around the selection border. These dots are called marching ends. Now we can come over and click in the foreground color box and if you want to follow along, just type in the HTML notation for 577956, then click OK. OK, now let's go up to the Edit menu and select Fill with Foreground Color. Even though the selection is finished, we are still left with the marching ends. 
so come up to the Select menu and select None. Now we can reposition the image, so come back up to the toolbox and select the Move tool. Then come over to the Layers panel and select the layer, the image layer. When you're happy with the position, make sure the image borders are still covering all of the canvas. If it is shorter on the right side, that is OK as the color background will cover it. Now we can resize the image. Come up to the Layers menu and select Layer to Image Size and this will resize the image to the actual size of the canvas. You can finish here if you like, or you can create a small background color box to go below the text. First we need to do is to create a new layer. You can do this by clicking on the New Layer button below the Layers panel. Change the name and in the default settings, in Fill With, select Transparency, then click OK. Now let's reposition the layer in the layer stack. So come into the panel. The layer that we just created has to be between the text layer and the green background. Now come over to the toolbox and grab the Rectangle Select tool and click and drag out a rectangle shape around the text. Now let's have a look at the rectangle we just created. The selection is displayed with moving ants around the selection border. Everything inside the rectangle selection will be edited. You can change the size by placing the mouse pointer inside the rectangle and dragging on the sides. When you're happy with the size, come over to the toolbox and grab the eyedropper tool. This is a great little tool for taking color samples from an image. I'll select the coral shades. The color samples are displayed on the foreground color box. When you're happy with the color, click in the foreground color box to open the dialog. I was testing this before, and the original color is not the one that you can see here now in the color selector. If you'd like to copy the HTML notations, please do. It is CF5B48, then click OK. Now all we need to do is grab the Full Bucket tool from the toolbox and click inside the rectangle selection. To stop the selection of moving ants, Go up to the top menu and select Select None. Now we can remove the guides and have a good look at the thumbnail. Let's export the image now. So come up to the File menu, Export As, choose the file that you want to save your image in. Now let's type in a name. YouTube accepts file formats such as JPEG, PNG and GIF. Type in the file format you want, or you can scroll down to the bottom of the dialog and select the file format from the menu. Then click on Export. Now here in the dialog, I'll leave all the default settings and click Export again. We'll wrap up here for this video. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy!